I believe that, that the main structural change that is needed within the life of a church is the whole question of being prepared to listen and, and also to address uh, problems um, such as, the, as, as clericalism and, and authoritarianism within the life of the church. And in other words, to, to embrace the, the voices of all the faithful within the church. I think really one of the basic problems within the life of the church at the moment is, is the, the absence of, of the voices of women. And at least that really is addressed uh, in, in, in real terms, in terms of them being part of the decision making and in the governance of the church. I'm sure the church wouldn't be in its present parlous state at the moment if their voices had, had been uh, involved. And it's going to uh, involve a, a, a huge change in, in terms of what uh, we're all about. But unless we make those changes, I think we'll continue along the track that, that, that we've been going on, that's been uh, leading nowhere really and leading only to a, a great deal of destruction. It embarrassed me a lot over the years in terms of um, the church is teaching on sexuality and I think at times that was really overemphasized in terms of the morality of the church and the fact that that was being dictated uh, by a, a completely male voices within the church and the male experiences made no sense at all to me and um, I believe that all of that needs to be addressed if we're going to be really true to uh, reflecting the mission of Jesus to, to others. Well, the whole question of celibacy, optional celibacy, I think, is, is what I've always proposed. And, and that's one of the things that I was in trouble with the Vatican for over the years too, saying that uh, many people uh, would have a vocation to the priesthood, uh, but would find that they don't have a vocation to, to celibacy. Many of my friends in the priesthood have found that they couldn't live a celibate life and therefore had to, to walk away from priesthood altogether and all of that makes no no sense uh, to me at all and and of course there, there are no um, reasons in, in scripture at all why that should be the case and in fact in some of the um, eastern parts of the Catholic Church there is a married clergy in any case. I see one of the great um, uh, blessings of Catholicism is the union that we have uh, with the Pope and, 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 and um, but I think it's important though that we're able to find unity um, within diversity. And I think sometimes uh, the central authority of the Vatican, I think can um, mean that unity uh, equals uniformity. And I think that's been quite um, destructive. And in any case, I'm not sure in what cultures um, Celibacy today is a natural fit for the clergy. There may be some, but I'm not, I'm not aware of any that there are. And I think there'd be many vocations to the priesthood uh, if, if that rule was, um, uh, was relaxed. And, uh, and equally too, with the question of the ordination of women, that's a more complex issue I know. But I think even there, I think there's got to be a, an openness to that. And, and, uh, and many good scriptural Scholars would say there's no reason in scripture why uh, women can't be ordained to the priesthood. Uh, I know that there were, in, in Pope John Paul II's time, uh, some strictures put upon the dis even the discussion of, 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 of that. But, but really, I just think that's the point that I'm making, that the voices of all the faithful need to be listened to. And, I've, and, and there are just so many people that that um, recognise that, that women need to be part of the decision making in the, in the church. It gives me no, no joy whatever to see what's happened to Cardinal Pell. But I must say that um, in our time as bishops together, that he and I were usually on the opposite side of the argument in the sense that he espoused very much a conservative uh, view of the church and one which I believe didn't um, best reflect what the teaching of the Second Vatican Council was. Um, but, you know, he obviously had his supporters um, and, and, and he was certainly very well connected in, in, uh, uh, with, within the Vatican and also, too, among uh, conservative 
American uh, bishops and cardinals, and I think that that was, was part of what led to his advancement to high office in the uh, life of the church. I was very shocked by the by the uh, the allegations that were, were brought against him, and uh, and I wrote to him twice last year to offer my prayers and my support. And when he was convicted, um, I I wept actually at the what was happening to him because uh, I was uh, I visited I visited friends in jail and uh, often those friends too were, were priests that were in jail for sex sex offences and uh, I know what a horrible existence it is so I take no joy whatever in, in what's happened to him but I think in all of this we've got to be aware of the the, the great hurt that's been done to the victims of abuse and I've spent a lot of time. Uh, talking with those people and, and, and uh, you know, listening to their stories and, and, and seeing the, 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 the destruction that it's done to their lives. And, uh, so I, don't, I think we've got to be careful not to be uh, saying poor us in all of this, but rather I think we've got to look very carefully at the, uh, at the, the terrible damage that has done, been done to victims of, of, of abuse. And I think that it's uh, incumbent on all of us to do what we can uh, to, to make whatever reparation we can. We can't undo the past, but we can do whatever is possible to uh, take those uh, people seriously, not just the ones that have been offended against, but their families and the parishes and the communities that they live in. All of those are in need of healing. And I think that all of us have got a responsibility to, to do something about that. The main thing I'd like to say in conclusion is, is to, to give a message of hope. Uh, a friend of mine said that uh, we only have the virtue of hope if we possess it when the situation is seemingly hopeless. And, and I think we really need, uh, we, we need hope.